Hello, this is Adam. Um, I just thought it would be a lot of fun to show people my horror collection. People have been interested in them, so I was going to go through and just sort of talk a little bit about the movies I have. Um, this is actually not all of the horror movies I have. This is just mostly, um, like, most of the Blu-rays I have. Uh, a couple DVDs mixed in. I do have duplicates of some of these movies. I also have some that are on order that haven't come yet, so this collection is sort of ever-evolving, but this is what I have on the shelf for now. Uh, so we'll start going through them. Uh, first up on the top, we have the Phantasm Sphere collection. That was a Best Buy exclusive, I believe. Um, of course, they are films directed by Don Coscarelli. Well, the fifth one wasn't, but he was a producer and a writer on it, I believe. Um, really great cult films. Um, with these movies, the uh, I would actually say the second and third ones are the best. I think they're a lot more fun and sort of out there. Um, but yeah, it's really fun set. This set actually, um, I got it for a decent price. It's out of print now, uh, so it's a little bit harder to find, and it's going to be a little expensive if you go looking for it. But definitely worth it if you can find this for a decent price get this set. This is the Sphere Collection uh, on the shelf. We also have a Godzilla uh, Criterion Collection set, but I don't know if that would necessarily count as horror. I also have Midsummer, the Director's Cut. I have that backwards there. This is an Ari Aster film. This is the 4K Director's Cut. Um, the theatrical cut was released on uh, Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, this came out later on. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous set. Um, not sure if I said this, but this is the 4K edition. It's also available on Blu-ray. If you love like cult uh, folk horror or just like weird artsy fartsy horror, definitely one to look out for. Uh, really highly recommend. Director's cut is a lot more expensive though. So if you're not 100 percent sure you're interested in the movie, I would say buy the uh, theatrical version because it's a lot cheaper. And then if you like it, then maybe go and pick up the director's cut. All right. Next, we actually I don't really have these in any sort of particular order. Um, the only order I have is that, like, I have series first, and then I go into individual movies. But, um, here we're gonna start with, uh, the reason this is up front is actually this is my favorite horror movie of all time. This is the Aero Video Ringyu Collection, um, Japanese horror movies based on the novels of Koji Suzuki, um, and of course the inspiration for the American remake The Ring. Uh, one weird thing about this box set is it lists Ringyu, Ringyu 2, and Ringyu 0 on the side. There's actually f a fourth film. Uh, when they made the movies, um, the first movie, Ringyu, was directed by Hideo Nakata. Um, but while they were making that, they also made a sequel called uh, Spiral or Rasen. And they were released back-to-back uh, -back in theaters at the same time. The idea was that people would see the first movie and then immediately walk in and see the second movie. They thought they could double their ticket sales, basically. Problem is, everyone loved Ringyu. Not a lot of people liked Rossin. So what they did is the next year, they got Hideo Nakata back in the original writer. And they made an alternate sequel called Ringyu 2. And that was a bit more liked. Um, the thing with Rossin is, to my knowledge, it was a little bit closer to the novels. The novels were a bit more sci-fi than horror. But because Ringyu was much more straightforward horror, people didn't like that. So Ringyu 2 is definitely more along the lines of the first film. Uh, and then there's Ringyu Zero Birthday, which is a prequel. Uh, Ringyu Zero Birthday is actually my second favorite. I think it's a really excellent prequel, and it really delves into the backstory more and explores the characters. So really nice box set. Again, I think this is out of print. You can get the first movie on Blu-ray now from Arrow, but you can't get any of the sequels unless you pay out the ass for a used copy of this set. And then we have the American remake of The Ring. Uh, I actually really like The Ring. I think it's a very solid, uh, very solid remake. It was actually the movie that kind of kicked off the 2000s trend of American remakes of uh, Asian horror films, but this is definitely one of the best. Uh, then there was the sequel, The Ring 2. This happened several times in this collection. This drives me nuts. The first movie and the third movie are on Blu-ray, but the second movie is only on DVD, and that's happened a couple times. Uh, where one movie just randomly will not be on Blu-ray and it drives me absolutely batty, but that's neither here nor there. Ring 2, not very good. Um, I got him more for completion's sake than anything, and the same goes for the third movie, Rings. Not particularly great, but I have the other one, so I figured I might as well get it. All right, next up we have the Criterion Collection of Night of the Living Dead, the George A. Romero classic. Uh, nifty thing about this is this has an alternate cut of the movie, I believe, called Night of Anubis which is the original title. It's like a work print version of it. Um, classic horror movie. Thought it was worth owning. Next, I have the Second Sight UK uh, Dawn of the Dead 4K collection. If you know about this, uh, you'll understand why I bought the UK edition. But if not, 
The American copyright holder is infamously a greedy, greedy bastard, and he basically makes it impossible to release the film in the U.S., um, but they released this 4K set in the UK, and because 4K is inherently region-free, you can play most of these discs on an American 4K player, so that's why I picked it up, because I really wanted to have this movie. It's one of the greatest horror movies of all time. It does have one Blu-ray disc that you can't play on American players, because Blu-ray is region-locked, but whatever. I have three different versions of the movies on 4K with this set, so I have what I'm looking for. Next up, we have the Shout Factory Collector's Edition of George A. Romero's Day of the Dead and George A. Romero's Land of the Dead. Those were the third and fourth movies in his uh, Night of the Living Dead series. Uh, there are two others, but I just don't have them. Uh, Day of the Dead, I think, is an underrated classic. Um, really fun movie. Land of the Dead is kind of eh, but it's it's okay. It's watchable. Um, next up, we have my favorite of the 80s slasher series, the Chucky movies. Um, there is a newer set I'm going to probably upgrade to at some point, but I have the seven movies here. I do not have the remake. I wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, yeah, Chucky is one of those things he used to terrify me as a kid. Uh, my sister had Cabbage Patch dolls, and she would play pranks on me with them, so... Uh, but then I sort of faced my fears as a teenager, watched them, and I absolutely loved them. I think it's a very fun, daring series, and it's quite underrated. So it was a nice, um, so I love that I have these in this, uh, collection. I definitely put them up front because they're some of my favorites. Next up, we have Nightbreed. This is another Shout Factory Collector's Edition. This is the limited edition of the Director's Cut. Uh, Clive Barker film based on his novel Cabal. Um, infamously, the film was kind of butchered by the studios, uh, the studio, like, really cut the movie down and made it, like, way too fast-paced, way too crazy, and they thought the footage was lost, but I think in 2014, they found a lot of the deleted footage in a vault somewhere, so Clyde Barker was able to go back and make a director's cut using some of the footage. Uh, the nice thing about this collector's edition set, the limited edition, is that it also has the theatrical cut on, uh, Blu-ray. Uh, I think that's the only way you can actually get the theatrical cut on Blu-rays through the set. It was limited to 10,000 units, though, so it's going to be a little bit harder and a little bit more expensive to find if you're interested. But I would recommend giving this movie a watch. It's occasionally on Shudder, I think. Uh, and I think I've seen it on just regular Prime a couple times, too. Next up, Nightmare on Elm Street series. Probably my second favorite of the 80s slasher series behind uh, Chucky. Really fun, really imaginative films. Um, everyone knows Freddy Krueger, though, so we'll move on. Um... <clears throat> Next up, another Shout Factory thing. Uh, we have the Friday the 13th Collection Deluxe Edition. This is all 12 films on Blu-ray, including Freddy vs. Jason and the remake. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous set. This came out just a couple of months ago, actually. Um, there was one issue with the set, which is that a couple of the discs had manufacturing errors. Like, I think Jason X was missing a few sound effects. Jason Goes to Hell was missing a few shots, but you could get replacement discs, and I think you still can, so if you're interested in the series, definitely get this set. It's a really, really worth it. Um, and there's also, like, new restorations of the first four movies in Jason Goes to Hell, a lot, new, a lot of new special features, so definitely worth it. We also have up here the documentaries Never Sleep Again and Crystal Lake Memories, uh, multi-hour documentaries about the Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Friday the 13th series. Uh, worth looking into if you love those films. Next up, we have two Amityville collections. The first is another Shout Factory release. It is the first three movies, Amityville Horror, Amityville 2, The Possession, and Amityville 3D. Uh, Amityville Horror, of course, is a classic. Uh, I actually really, really like the second movie, The Possession. I think it's just as good as the original, albeit a lot more fictionalized, because supposedly these are based on true stories, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, third movie is God Awful, uh, Amityville 3D. Uh, it's worth watching maybe once just for historical perspective on the series, but I think I haven't watched it once since I got in the set. Um, <clears throat> next up is a, another Amityville box set. This is a limited one from Vinegar Syndrome. I think there's only 5,000 of these made. This has four of the other movies. It has Amityville Horror, The Evil Escapes, also known as Amityville uh, 4. Um, it's a movie about a killer lamp, which sounds ridiculous, but it's actually pretty good. Amityville 1992, it's about time in Amityville, a new generation. Just sort of goofy 90s entries in the series. And then it has Amityville Dollhouse, which is... Love it or hate it, I think. Uh, I know a lot of people who absolutely hate that movie, but I think it's a lot of fun because um, it's just so weird and goofy. Um, but, yeah, this is a really nice set. I don't know if it's still available, but if you do have an interest in the Amityville movies, definitely check it out. Next up, we have the Shout Factory Halloween Complete Collection 15-Disc Deluxe Edition. This was 
all of the Halloween movies made until... Oops, sorry, something just fell. This was all the Halloween movies made until the Rob Zombie Halloween 2. This was a really nice set. Um, the only problem is that, like a lot of Shout Factory things, it went out of print and now it's next to impossible to find it for a decent price. I think I've seen it going for like five, six hundred bucks online. Uh, I managed to get this dirt cheap, like really dirt cheap, right before it went out of print. Um, so I got a good price on it. Only problem is, as you can see, the box came kind of scuffed up, and also the copy of Halloween H2O that came with it was broken. Uh, there's a crack on the disc, so I ended up just buying a regular Blu-ray copy of it separately. And then I have the 4K Ultra HD version of the Halloween 2018 sequel. Really, really like that. I think it's the second best film after the original, and the original is, of course, a classic by John Carpenter. Next up, we have another Shout Factory release, the Critters Collection, the first four entries in the Critter series. Sort of fun, 80s, like, you know, little monster movies, kind of. It's debatable whether or not it's a Gremlins knockoff. The uh, writer claims he wrote it before Gremlins came out, but it came out after Gremlins came out, so it is what it is. First two movies, though, are really, really fun, especially the second one, which I believe was directed by Mick Garris. Um, who, if you know horror, you probably know who that is. Um, really fun movies. Third one was kind of notable for being Leonardo DiCaprio's first movie, I believe. Fourth one is pretty terrible, but all things considered, it's a really nice set worth having. And then I have Critter's Attack, which was a made-for-TV fifth movie that came out a couple years ago. Uh, not very good. Uh, very, very low budget and sort of goofy, but worth having just to have the complete collection. Another Shaft Factory here with the Omen Collection. This is... The four original films plus the 2006 remake. Uh, horror classics, of course, the original at least. Um, I actually haven't seen all the films yet. I've got to get to it. There's going to be a lot of movies on this shelf that I actually haven't watched yet. Next up is a movie that's kind of debatable whether it should be on the horror shelf or not. This is an Arrow video set. Um, it's films by Shinya Tsukamoto. Um, sort of crazy Japanese director. Um... I mostly stuck this on the shelf because two of the movies, Tetsuo the Iron Man and Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer, are sort of considered body horror. So I figured it should sit on the shelf there. Really nice set. Like many others on the shelf, it went out of print. It came out last year, and I think they don't make it anymore. So I got this for $75, and I think it's going for about $150 now. So I would say if you're interested, buy it before the price goes way up. Next up, Shout Factory release, The Fly Collection. This is the three original Fly movies. The first two, of course, starred Vincent Price. Uh, the third one did not star Vincent Price. Um, third one's kind of goofy, but the first two are definitely worth seeing. This is a really nice set, a lot of new special features. And it also has, of course, the David Cronenberg remake starring Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis and the sequel. Um, the sequel is a lot of it's a lot of trashy fun, but the first uh, remake by David Cronenberg is excellent. One of the best horror remakes of all time. Next up, we have a DVD box set of the first nine Puppet Master movies. Um, the series is, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's really goofy. It's killer puppets, very low budget. Um, but I think it's fun. I used to watch them a lot on the Sci-Fi channel. I used to play them just about every weekend. Um, there is a Blu-ray set that has all 12 films. I wanted to get it, but it's gone out of print, and it's like a thousand dollars or something ridiculous like that so and as goofy and fun as these movies are it's just not worth a thousand dollars to me i'm sorry uh, i got to get the rest of them on either dvd or blu-ray though at some point next up we have two sort of collections uh these are the sort of collections where they take um public domain movies and sort of stick them on and you see it's 50 movies on each set i got these from uh aunt of mine who gave them to me these are really fun sets because you can find like a lot of weird obscure movies on them haven't gone through them all but i just like having them in my collection next up we have the regular blu-ray of poltergeist uh classic produced by steven spielberg directed by toby hooper of course, it's sort of infamous for the poltergeist curse and how multiple people attached to the film have passed away. Um, but on its own, just a really, really good uh, haunted house movie. We have the Shout Factory Collector's Edition of Poltergeist 2 and Poltergeist 3. Poltergeist 2, I actually think, is almost as good as the first movie. Um, very, very fun. It introduces the character of Henry Kane, the evil pastor, who was played by Julian Beck, who was absolutely excellent in the film. Uh, and then we have Poltergeist 3, which is pretty awful, but I bought it for completion's sake. Um, these are Shaft Factory releases. Shaft Factory, of course, does really nice deluxe limited editions. I think they're both out of print now, so they're going to be harder to find and a little bit more expensive. Next, we have 
Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2, and I do have the third one right here. I don't know why it's separate from that. Uh, that was a little mistake on my part. Um, fun sort of creature feature movies. A little icky to have because the director is a convicted uh, child molester. So I feel a little icky having them in my collection, but... What are you going to do? Uh, next up, we have several of the Hellraiser movies. We have Arrow Video Collector's Editions of Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Classic Clyde Barker films, among some of my favorite horror films in general. Uh, especially the first one. Uh, beautiful film. Um, there was a box set with the third movie, but it's long since out of print, so they released the first two separately. I also have a box set with... Hellraiser 4 Bloodlines, Hellraiser 5 Inferno, Hellraiser 6 Hellseeker, and Hellraiser 8 Hellworld. Of those two, um, Bloodline and Inferno are actually pretty good. The other two are pretty awful. Um, the Hellraiser movie is kind of, movies are kind of hard to get all on Blu-ray. Um, like I said, the trilogy set with the third one is out of print, and I don't think you can get the third one on Blu-ray in Region 1 on its own. Um... And then the seventh movie, I believe it's called Deader, is just weirdly hard to find. It's out of print. Um, it's weird. For as popular as the Hellraiser movies are, they're really, really difficult to track down. Um, this is just a uh, set my father gave me of uh, sort of cheapo horror movies. Uh, next we have the Shaft Factory Collector's Edition of Silent Hill. Silent Hill is, of course, based on the popular video game series. And I think the movie is probably one of the best video game movies there is out there. Uh, it makes a lot of changes to the source material that I didn't like, but it really captures the tone and the atmosphere. So, all in all, pretty solid film. Then we have the sequel, Revelations, which is god-awful. I uh, have it mostly for the sake of collection, but um, it also is kind of borderline so bad it's good. So, I do enjoy having it there. I've watched it a few times, and um, I imagine on substances or alcohol it would be even funnier. Um... I mean, it is entertaining in spurts, too. There is some good things about it, but it is pretty awful. Uh, next up, Blu-ray box set of The Lost Boys and its two direct-to-video sequels. Bought this mostly for the first movie. first movie is, of course, an 80s vampire classic um, with uh, Corey Feldman. And is Corey Heyman? I believe Corey Heyman is in it, too. Uh, it was one of the two Corey's movies, I believe, um, directed by Joel Schumacher, the original at least. Um, really fun movie. Uh, the two direct-to-video sequels I haven't really seen, but I've heard they're pretty bad. So, uh, moving on, we have these two low-budget movies, The Dead and The Dead 2. They are zombie movies. I actually have not seen those yet. I bought those off of a friend. A friend of was selling off a lot of his physical media, and I grabbed these. Um, but I've heard they're a good bit of fun. Uh, we have next the Shaft Factory Collector's Edition of The Craft, of course, starring Feruza Balk. Um, really, really excellent 90s sort of goofy witch horror movie. Um, a lot of fun, good Shaft Factory Collector's Edition, uh, worth picking up for sure. And then we have the sequel, The Craft Legacy, which was a super controversial movie. Um, people were not happy that they made a sequel to the original because the original is such a cult classic. I actually kind of liked this movie. Um, I'm going to be totally honest. I thought the actors were charming. I thought the plot was pretty solid. A little too fast-paced, but I enjoyed it. Um, one thing I will say about The Craft Legacy is if woke entertainment bothers you, uh, you will not like the movie because it is very, very woke. I actually kind of like that about it because there are characters that it explores that are different. Um, it was one of the few times I've seen like a bisexual man be represented in media in a positive light, so I thought that was really nice. Um, next up, we have the Maniac Cop Trilogy. These are, of course, sort of 80s classic slasher movies about a killer cop, as you could probably guess. First movie starred Bruce Campbell, actually, as the main character, uh, as the hero. Bruce Campbell's, of course, a B-movie legend. Um, he's also in the second one a little bit, but not too much, not to spoil things. Second one is actually probably the best out of the three. Um, and then Maniac Cop 3 is pretty bad, but it's got its moments. Um, really nice sets, though. If you can get these online, be sure to pick them up if you like the series. Next up, we have the 4K editions of the 2017 It in its sequel, It Chapter 2. Um, really solid Stephen King adaptations. I think they're worth seeing. Uh, set, first one more than the second one. The second one's a little bit... It's not quite as good as the first one, but it is still pretty entertaining. Um, really nice 4K editions, too. 
Next up, we have the first four Final Destination movies on Blu-ray. I still have to get the fifth one to complete the collection, but this is just, it's a fun little set. They're fun little movies. Nothing to write home about, but I'm glad I own them. Next, we have the Shout Factory Collector's Editions of Species and Species 2. There was a collection of Species 3 and 4 from Shout Factory, but it went out of print before I could grab it. So I do not have the complete set. Species, um, good trashy fun, sort of an erotic sci-fi horror movie. Species 2, borderline so bad it's good. I own it more for completion's sake than anything else, but um, I watched it a few times. It's, it's enjoyable in how sort of dumb it is. Uh, next up, we have all the Paranormal Activity movies. Uh, these really don't need any introduction. They're still pretty well known. Um, found footage horror movies. I think they were created by Oren Pelly. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the first three and the fifth one, the fourth and the sixth, not so much, but I had to have them all. So next up we have all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. I believe there are eight of them right now. And including, uh, in this, I have the Shadow Factory Collector's Edition of Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2 and Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation. Um, of course, classic horror series created by Toby Hooper, and I cannot remember the name of the writer. Uh, Kim Hankel was the writer. I believe Kim Hankel also wrote and directed uh, New Next Generation, but I could be wrong about that. Let me check that. Yeah, Kim Hankel wrote and directed that. I was right. Um, of course, everyone knows Leatherface, The Chainsaw, all of that. Um, I personally think Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2 is my favorite just because that's one of the ones, one of those movies where they kind of embrace the absurdity and make it more of a comedy than a horror movie. Uh, not everyone agrees, but that's personally my favorite. Next up, we have House and House 2, The Second Story. Um, these are, I believe, produced um, by the same producers as the Friday the 13th film. I believe it's Sean Cunningham. Uh, first one is directed by, oh, what is his name? Uh, Steve Miner, who also um, directed several of the Friday the 13th movies, directed Halloween H2O, and he's directed several other movies. Uh, House and House 2 are really, really fun horror comedies, especially the first one, which stars William Cat. I'd highly recommend them if you like goofy horror comedies. Um, there is a third and a fourth house. I don't know if they're available separately on Blu-ray in the U.S., um, I wouldn't recommend them nearly as much, though. The House 3 is basically a movie that they just threw the house name on, completely unrelated, and House 4 is like a weird quasi-remake of the first movie. Not as good, though. Uh, next up, we have the Hills Have Eyes remake collection. Um, another thing I bought off of my friend when I bought his collection off, part of his collection off of him. Um, just sort of fun, trashy horror remakes. Next up, we have a set of From Dust Till Dawn and From Dust Till Dawn 2. Of course, From Dust Till Dawn 1 was directed by Robert Rodriguez and written by Quentin Tarantino. Crazy movie with vampires in it. Um, a lot of fun. From Dust Till Dawn 2 is just sort of, I believe it was Scott Spiegel directed it, and um, just sort of average sort of directed video sequel from the late 90s, early 2000s, but it's watchable. There is a third movie, too. I just have not been able to get it yet. Um, next up... One of my absolute favorite horror movies, this is a Shaw Factory Collector's Edition, it's Ginger Snaps. Really, really good Canadian uh, werewolf movie directed by John Fawcett and written by Karen Walton, starring Catherine Isabel and Emily Perkins. Really, really fun movie that uses the curse of the werewolf as a metaphor for puberty and female sexuality, and it's very clever, has a good dark sense of humor. Just a solid, solid movie. I would really highly recommend it. We also have the two follow-ups on DVD, as happens sometimes. Only the first one is on Blu-ray. Uh, Ginger Snaps 2 is a direct sequel. Um, I like it almost as much as the first one. I think it's a really fun movie. Ginger Snaps Back at the Beginning is kind of this weird quasi-remake slash prequel that's honestly not as good, but I have it just to have it. Uh, next up, we have all of the Evil Dead uh, entries. We have the original, which is, of course, directed by Sam Raimi and starring Bruce Campbell. The best of the trilogy, Evil Dead 2. A nice Shaft Factory Collector's Edition of the third movie, Army of Darkness, that has three different versions of the movie, I believe, on it. The remake, which was actually a very solid movie. I think it was directed by Fede Alvarez. And then the uh, series, Ash vs. Evil Dead, which ran for three series seasons. Um, a lot of fun. If you have not seen the Evil Dead trilogy, I would highly recommend it, especially the second and third ones in the series. Um, uh, just whacked out movies the first one's more of a straightforward horror but the sequels really embrace comedy and become much more slapstick and crazy 
So definitely worth checking out. Next we have the Scream Collections. This has five movie set. It's actually just the first three movies and then like two TV documentaries. And then we have Scream 4. Classics, of course, Wes Craven starring Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette. Um, they sort of made horror hip again in the 90s and they were very self-aware. Really good movies, though. I would highly recommend them. All right, next up we have... Four of the Exorcist movies, a really nice Blu-ray set of the first movie. Uh, we have the Shaft Factory Collector's Edition of Exorcist 2, The Heretic, and The Exorcist 3. And then I have one of the two prequels. I have Dominion prequel to The Exorcist. Um, there's a lot to unpack with this series. The first movie is, of course, a horror classic. Second one is sort of so mind-bogglingly dumb that it's kind of entertaining in a way. Exorcist 3, I think, is just as good as the original, if I'm going to be honest. Um, I think it's an excellent, excellent movie. Um, definitely highly recommend it if you've only seen the original. And then there's Dominion prequel to The Exorcist, which has an interesting story behind it. It was originally the movie they made, but then the studio got cold feet because it wasn't gory enough. So they hired a different director to go back and remake it. And that's the movie called Exorcist The Beginning. They basically reshot the entire movie of Dominion and added extra like blood and gore to it. So there's two different versions of the prequel. Next up, we have all of the Alien movies, including the two Alien vs. Predator movies. I have to get the Predator movies at some point. I know there's a nice 4K set out there I was looking to buy. Um, classic movies, a variety of directors, including James Cameron, Ridley Scott, and David Fincher. Um, there's not really much that you can say about those that hasn't already been said. Next up, nice two-pack of Ouija and Ouija Origin of Evil. Uh, Ouija is pretty terrible, all things considered, but I think Origin of Evil is actually really solid. I'm just going to get down on my knee here so I can give you a better view. Uh, next up, the Mimic three-film set. The first Mimic is a film by my favorite director, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, underrated 90s movie about giant killer bugs. Sounds goofy, but it's really, really well executed. Second one and third one are sort of... They were from that early 2000s boom of direct-to-video sequels. Second movie is pretty terrible, all things considered, but the third movie, which is called Mimic Sentinel, is actually a really solid movie. I would highly recommend the third one. Uh, next up, we have the Rob Zombie trilogy, House of the Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, uh, Three from Hell. Haven't seen Three from Hell yet, but I really enjoy House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, especially Devil's Rejects. Uh, next up, we have all of the Leprechaun movies with, of course, Warwick Davis as the Leprechaun, except for two of them. Um, these are the movies that everyone always likes to pick on. There's always the people who are like, oh, how could you like Leprechaun? It's not even scary. It's a fucking comedy, guys. It's a movie about a killer leprechaun. He kills somebody with a pogo stick in the first movie. It's not meant to be taken seriously. So you can stop with the posturing and saying, it's not even scary. It's not meant to be scary. All right. They are fun movies, though. Uh, next up is The Collector and The Collection. Two movies that were uh, written by Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan, and Marcus Dunstan directed them. Uh, they were some of the writers on the Saw movies and the Feast trilogy. Uh, really fun sort of movies. Uh, the first one is a home invasion thriller where somebody breaks into a house to rob them only to find out that somebody's taken the family hostage. So he ironically has to save the family he was trying to rip off. And then the second one sort of continues the story from there. Uh, really, really fun movies though. I'd highly recommend them. Next up, Shot Factory Collector's Editions of Candyman and Candyman 2, Farewell to the Flesh. Clive Barker movies. The first Candyman is probably one of my top five favorite horror movies of all times. A uh, really relevant film deals with a lot of sort of themes about society and race um, and just an excellent horror movie in its own right. Uh, Candyman Farewell to the Flesh is a lesser movie than the first one, but I think it's a lot of fun to watch. It's much more of a generic slasher movie, but it's got some good kills and some fun scenes, so I'd recommend it too. And then we have, as is the case with The Ring 2, we have the third movie in the Candyman series, which is only on DVD, Candyman 3 Day of the Dead, and it is fucking awful. Um, I only own it for completion's sake, so don't give me too much shit for having it in my collection. Even Tony Todd, the star of the series, thinks it's terrible, so you could probably just get away with watching the first two. Next up is a Kino Lorber collector's edition of Deep Rising, filmed by Stephen Summers. Uh, Stephen Summers is probably best known for directing the 1999 film The Mummy and its sequel. Um, really fun sort of throwback creature feature from, I think, 1997, starring Treat Williams. Um... 
It's just a good, fun movie about alien, uh, not aliens, um, sea monsters that invade a cruise ship. Um, the uh, heroes have to fight them off. Um, just fun movie. We also have a different edition of Deep Rising that also has the Donald Sutherland movie, The Puppet Masters. Um, mostly bought it for Deep Rising, and then I upgraded to this one. But I kept keep this on the shelf because it has the Puppet Masters in it. I'm just going to get down low right here. Next up, we have... A set of Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Of course, the two movies from the 90s. Um, Francis Ford Coppola, I believe, directed Dracula. And Kenneth Branagh directed Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. A lot of people really like the Dracula film but hate the Frankenstein movie. I'm kind of the opposite. I like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein more than uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Not that I don't like Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think it's a solid movie, but I just prefer sort of the manic energy of the Frankenstein film. All right, next up, we actually have two documentaries. We have In Search of Darkness and In Search of Darkness Part 2. They were crowdfunded horror movies about 80s horror. Um, crowdfunded documentary movies, I mean, about 80s horror. Uh, really good films. They're both in excess of four hours. I don't think you can get them on Blu-ray currently. They were only released for limited numbers. Um... If you can, though, I think they are available to stream on Shudder, if you have Shudder. Uh, worth seeing, though. Next up, we have the horror comedies Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You, which were directed by Christopher Landon. Really, really, really fun movies. I'd highly recommend them. Um, just really good actress, too, in Jessica Roth. Uh, she really brings the main character to life really well. Next up, we have the Blade trilogy, of course. Um, we also have the 4K edition of the first movie up here. Uh, first Blade was directed by Stephen Norrington. Second one was directed by Guillermo del Toro. And the third one was directed by David S. Goyer. Uh, really fun sort of action horror movies about a vampire hunter. Um, Blade Trinity is kind of infamous. People don't like it that much, but I think it's it's enjoyable as a guilty pleasure. So, um, Next up, we have a set called Queens of Scream. It's just a box set. I bought it mostly for I Know What You Did Last Summer in Vacancy. Weirdly enough, you cannot get I Know What You Did Last Summer on Blu-ray in the U.S., I don't think. Or if you can, it's like way out of print and, and hard to find. So this set was really cheap, so I got it mostly for that movie and vacancy. We have the John Carpenter version of The Thing in the 2011 prequel. John Carpenter is The Thing probably, for my money, is the best horror movie ever made. It has such an exquisite sense of dread. And it is just a beautifully made film. The prequel is kind of meh, but worth owning just for historical context. Next up, we have James Wan's The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2, based, of course, on the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Really fun movies. Um, I don't have any of the spinoffs right now. I know there's a box set that has all of the Annabelle and the Nun spinoffs. I'm probably going to pick that up at some point. Next up, also from director James Wan, is the Insidious film series. He directed the first two and produced the third and fourth film. Um, they were all written by Lee Winnell, his friend and frequent collaborator. Uh, really fun sort of haunted house movies. Um, they get a little more hit and miss as they go along, but I don't think there's a single one I would say was bad. Um, and, um, yeah, there's just a lot to like about them, and I'd highly recommend them if you like just good, creepy movies. 20 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later, of course, the famous sort of zombie movies. Uh, first one was directed by Danny Boyle, and I think he might have produced the second one. Um, yeah, just worth owning. Um Next up, we have The Cabin in the Woods, which was co-written by Joss Whedon, who has kind of become a bad word nowadays because, well, it turns out he treats his, uh, he treats his actors like shit. Um, but that being said, really excellent movie, sort of a loving homage to horror that also takes the piss out of it. I also have a second version of it that came with Sinister and The Possession. Bought this set mostly for Cabin in the Woods and Sinister, because I had actually misplaced my regular copy, but I ended up finding it, so now I have two copies of it. Next up, we have The Blair Witch Project, which is, of course, the classic found footage horror movie. I also have the sequel, Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2, which, again, is on DVD, because it's not on Blu-ray. That drives me nuts. And then the third movie, Blair Witch on Blu-ray. Um, yep, drives me nuts, but it keeps happening. There's always one movie that's not on Blu-ray. Uh, Blair Witch Project, classic. I still think it holds up quite well. Uh, Book of Shadows is kind of bad, but kind of interesting. There's a lot of weird stuff that happened behind the scenes. And the version of the film we got was not the intended version. But I think it's got a couple fun moments. And Blair Witch, 
Weirdly enough, when it came out, at first everyone really liked it, and then everyone just turned on it like a dime, on a dime. Now, I really don't get it. I don't think it's particularly great, but I don't think it's that bad either. I think it's a perfectly fine uh, sequel. Uh, then we have uh, Masters of Horror Collection Volume 4. Bought this mostly because it has a movie called Imprint, which was directed by Takashi McKay. Uh, it is one of the more disturbing things I've seen over the past, you know, 15 years. Um, so I bought this up mostly for that movie. Uh, next we have uh, Waxwork and Waxwork 2 Lost in Time. Really nice Blu-ray set. Uh, I believe they were directed by Anthony Hickox. Sort of fun horror comedies starring Zach Galligan from Gremlins. Uh, next up we have the Saw movies. I have the complete collection of the first seven movies. The eighth movie, Jigsaw in 4K. And then we also have the new 4K edition of the original. Um, I actually own multiple editions of all the Saw movies, so, because they were the movie, there's the sort of movies where they would release, like, four or five different, like, DVD and Blu-ray versions, and they would all have different special features and whatnot, so, um, but just for the sake of space, I just put the complete collection on the shelf, um, the rest are just in storage. I love the Saw series, I don't care what anybody says, I think they're a lot of fun, so, um, and I did see the new one, and I did really like it. So that will be going on the shelf once it's out on, uh, on Blu-ray. Next up, we have the Psycho Complete Collection of the first four movies. Of course, the original was the Alfred Hitchcock classic. Um, second movie, though, I actually think is really, really good. Third and fourth ones, not so much. But the second one, I would definitely say is worth owning. Uh, next up, we have the Vincent Price Collection Volume 1 Blu-ray from Shout Factory. Um, bought this mostly because it has films like The Pit and the Pendulum and The Abominable Dr. Fibes. Especially Dr. Fibes, I think that's a really excellent film. There are two other Vincent Price collections, but I think they're out of print right now. Uh, next up we have Hollow Man and Hollow Man 2. Hollow Man was, of course, a Paul Verhoeven film from the year 2000, I believe, starring Kevin Bacon. Uh, Hollow Man 2 was just known when those like early 2000s DVD boom bad direct video sequels. I do have another copy of Hollow Man for one reason though, which is I bought this set because I figured it was the cheapest way to get the first movie. The audio is terrible though. Um, the audio is really, really tinny, so it was borderline unwatchable for me, so I ended up having to go back and just buy a copy of the original on its own. Uh, next up, King of Horror Collection for Stephen King movies, the original miniseries of it, Cat's Eye, The Shining, and Salem's Lot. Of course, The Shining is a Stanley Cooper classic, and that's worth owning the set alone for. Um, it miniseries, if you grew up in the 90s, you loved that series probably. It was something that everyone always talked about. Uh, and Cat's Eye is a really fun sort of anthology from the 80s. I'd highly recommend that one. Uh, next up, we have the 4K Collector's Edition of Jaws, the Steven Spielberg classic. Uh, really nice set. Uh, came out last year. Also includes a Blu-ray. Um, the 4K is excellent on that, though. I would highly recommend it. Uh, next up, we have Tusk by Kevin Smith. Whacked out movie. Um, Justin Long plays a podcaster who gets surgically transformed into a walrus, and that's all I can really say about it. Um... Let's see. Next is Sphere. I don't necessarily know if that should be on this shelf, but I stuck it there just because. Um, sort of based on a novel by Michael Crichton, I believe. Um, it's a pretty solid little movie. I think it's a little underrated. Next up is Return of the Living Dead. Uh, really, really fun uh, zombie comedy from the 80s. Um, I also do have the sequel down here. I don't know why it ended up down here as opposed to up there, but it is what it is. I uh, really recommend Return of the Living Dead, though. Next up, we have Pet Cemetery, another Stephen King movie. Um, this is the original version, not the remake. Um, I There's not much to really say about Pet Cemetery. I think everyone knows about it. Um, next up, Monkey Shines. I'm getting to where I'm going to get a lot of Shout Factory Collector's Editions. Um, this is a George A. Romero film, though, about a guy who gets a helper monkey that sort of I believe the implication is that it sort of personifies his subconscious rage, but I haven't actually seen the movie, so I couldn't tell you for sure. Um, I got this before it went out of print. Now it's a little bit more expensive. Next up, Night of the Demons. Classic 80s campy horror comedy kind of deal. People go to a party at a mortuary and demons get unleashed. Um, a lot of fun. Not the greatest movie, but a lot of fun. Next up is From Beyond, which is from the director of Reanimator, I believe. A uh, really fun movie, loosely based on an H.P. Lovecraft uh, story. Next up, we have Idle Hands. 
um, which is a movie I used to love as a kid. It's a horror comedy about a man whose hand gets possessed by the devil. It's just a um, it's just a really fun movie. Uh, it's early two thousands, I believe, so it is definitely dated. You can kind of tell an early two thousands movie when you see one, but I thought it was worth having. Next up, Bubba Hotep. I'm going to talk a little bit about this movie because this movie is definitely worth checking out if you have not seen it. It stars Bruce Campbell and Ozzie Davis, um, directed by Don Croscarelli, who did the uh, Phantasm movies. The plot of this movie is fucking ridiculous. Bruce Campbell plays Elvis Presley, who switched places with an Elvis Presley impersonator and is now living in a Texas rest home with an elderly black man who thinks he's JFK and a mummy begins to attack them. So it is a mummy haunting a Texas rest home with elderly, uh, elderly Elvis and uh, black JFK. That sounds ridiculous, but guess what? It's actually a really, really, really good movie, um, despite the insane premise. I definitely recommend that one. Um, Tales from the Hood, which is uh, produced by Spike Lee. Fun sort of urban anthology film from the uh, 90s. Uh, worth owning. Lake Placid. I think it's a very underrated horror comedy from, I think, 1999, uh, maybe 2000. Uh, starring Bill Pullman, Bridget Fonda, Oliver Platt. Uh, basically, a crocodile attacks a small town, and uh, they have to try to figure out a way to stop it. Um, but it's really, really fun and jokey. Next up is The Howling, directed by Joe Dante. Um, probably my second favorite werewolf movie after Ginger Snaps. Uh, really solid film. Another Shadow Factory Collector's Edition, as were all of these. Um just a really good film, though, all around. Uh, next up is Audition by Takashi McKay, who also did Imprint that we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, classic Japanese horror movie. Highly, highly recommend it. Try to go in without spoilers, though. Just go in blind. You will either love it or you will be utterly disturbed. Um, or both, so. Next up, Slither, James Gunn film. James Gunn, of course, directed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and 2. Um, really fun horror comedy. Uh starring Nathan Fillion from Firefly, stars Michael Rooker from Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, also stars Elizabeth Banks. Another Shaft Factory Collector's Edition, highly recommend it. These two are also Shaft Factory. It's Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. It's a mockumentary about a guy who's aspiring to be the next great serial killer, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Then we have uh, John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. Really, really fun sort of H.P. Lovecraftian film. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. Next, we're going down here to Misery, the Rob Reiner, I believe. Yes, Rob Reiner film starring Kathy Bates and James Caan. Uh, another Shout Factory Collector's Edition. Um, another film that really doesn't need an introduction. I think most people know about it. Uh, next up is The Changeling. This is a really nice addition from Severn Films. This is probably my favorite Haunted House movie, if I'm going to be honest. Stars George C. Scott and Trish Vandeveer. Uh, it's from 1980, I believe. In 1980, 1981, somewhere in there. Um, excellent horror movie that sort of mixes a classic Haunted House story with a bit of a whodunit thriller. Uh, highly, highly recommend it, especially this nice Blu-ray set from Severin. Next up is The First Hatchet. Uh, I believe Adam Green is the director. Um, there's been four of these movies. I got to get the other three at some point. Um, just sort of fun, cheesy, comedic throwback to 80 slasher movies. Um, if you like the horror genre, it's worth seeing. Uh, it probably won't do anything for you if you're not a horror fan, though. Next up is The Descent. I have controversial opinions on this because I genuinely do not like this movie. I recognize that it's a good movie and that's why I own it, but I do not like it. I cannot tell you why. It just drives me absolutely batty for some reason, but I respect it. Uh, next up, Rob Zombie film, Lords of Salem. I actually haven't seen this yet. Uh, next up is the Michael Doherty uh, Halloween anthology film, Trick or Treat. Really excellent film. Michael Doherty, of course, also wrote and directed Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Krampus. And he also co-wrote a few of the X-Men films, I believe. Um, this movie was sort of infamous in that it was supposed to be released in theaters, and then it just sort of dropped off the face of the earth, and then it never came out, and then it was kind of quietly released direct-to-video. Uh, really excellent film, though, and it sort of built a cult audience over the years, which it deserves. So check that out if you like just sort of weird horror movies. Uh, next up, Robert Rodriguez film, The Faculty. Um, 
cheesy sci-fi horror movie from the 90s about killer teachers that are possessed by aliens. Uh, it's good fun. Um, next up, we have the 4K edition of Lee Winnell's The Invisible Man remake from last year. A uh, really, really solid remake. Probably one of the best remakes of the past 20 years. Just an excellent film on its own. I uh, highly recommend it. Next up, Manos, The Hands of Fate, which is sort of one of the best examples of a so bad it's good film ever made. Uh, it's absolutely terrible. It was on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Um, if you like bad movies, definitely check it out. Next up, we have the Shout Factory Collector's Edition of the 13 Ghosts movie from, I believe, the year 2000. It might have been 1999. Um, most people do not know this, but this is actually a remake. The Tony Shalhoub version is a remake. It was originally a film from, I think, 1960 that was directed by William Castle. We have the original upstairs. Um... But this is my copy of the remake, so I have it on my shelf down here. Um, but it's a really fun sort of goofy movie. Um, but definitely, if you haven't seen it, check out the original. Because the original is really sort of charming and dopey and fun. Next up, we have Reanimator, which is a classic um, horror movie from the 80s. Uh, based loosely on an H.P. Lovecraft movies. Uh, directed by uh, Stuart Gordon and uh, produced by Brian Usna. A uh, really, really fun movie starring Jeffrey Combs about a guy who can bring people back to life, but they always come back a little fucked up. And there's just all sorts of insane craziness going on in that. Um, sort of borderline comedy at times. Uh, has an infamous sexual assault scene that is so over the top that it's hilarious. Um, but really, really fun, gory, fun time. Uh, next up, Midnight Me Train, which I think is based on a Clive Barker book. Uh, just a fun little underrated movie from yesteryear. I think it came out in the mid-2000s. Um, stars, oh god, um, oh, who does it star? It stars Bradley Cooper, sort of before he kind of blew up and became big. A uh, fun movie, though. Uh, next up, we have The Witch, or The Vavitch. Came out a few years ago. Well, probably my favorite horror movie of the past five years. Um, this is a Blu-ray edition, but I want to upgrade to the 4K. Um, really, really good sort of subtle, slow-building art house horror. If you go in looking for like a lot of jumps, you're not going to like it. If you really like something subtle and evocative, then you will like the movie. Uh, next up is a Serbian film. This is not the uncut edition, unfortunately. Um, very controversial movie. I'm not going to go into it too much, but... If you like extreme, 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 extreme horror, it might be worth checking out. It's borderline satire, though. It's borderline parody. Um, it's just so far over the top, but it is pretty disturbing at times. Uh, next up, Guillermo del Toro film, Crimson Peak. A really, really fun, underrated movie. Um, having to do with ghosts and the supernatural. Um, it's not so much a horror movie as it is sort of a dark romantic drama, but there are spirits in it, so I put it on the horror shelf. Next up, uh, again, debatably not something for the horror shelf, but I love it, so I put it there. Repo the Genetic Opera, which was produced by the producers of the Saw movie and directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman. Uh, it's based on a stage play. It is a insane, uh, rock opera musical about, uh, dystopian future where... People can basically rent organs and have them transplanted into them, but if you don't keep up with their payments, they send a repo man to kill you and repossess the organs. A lot of fun. Uh, next up, Strangers. I actually haven't seen this in forever, so I can't tell you much about it. Um, next up, Donnie Darko debatably shouldn't be on this shelf, but I figured I would just stick it there. I also have the new 4K edition, but I'm holding off and putting that onto the shelf because there is a manufacturing error with one of the discs, so I'm not sure if I'll have to send it back yet. Next up, John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars, which is really awful, to be perfectly honest, but it's a John Carpenter film, so I felt like it should be on here. Uh, and I got it for, like, dirt cheap off of a friend of mine. Uh, next up, Get Out, the Jordan Peele movie. A really, really fun film. Uh, has a lot of really uh, meaningful themes to it. Um, I'm not going to talk much about that, though, because I think most people have seen it. Next up is Searching. This is a really underrated uh, film from the past few years. Um, John Cho stars in it, and his daughter goes missing, and he's trying to find her. And the entire thing is told from the perspective of, like, smartphones and computer screens. Uh, really excellent film. Uh, next up is the uh, Doom movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, honestly, it's not that great, but I... Again, it's one of the many movies I bought off of my friend when I bought part of his collection. 
Um, it's it's entertaining enough. Uh, next up is the Last House on the Left remake. Another one I haven't seen that I kind of bought off my friend. Uh, Deliver Us from Evil, really fun movie from Scott Derrickson, who directed Sinister and Doctor Strange. Um, supposedly loosely based on a true story, but I've looked into it, and it's, it's mostly fictional. Uh, next up, Houses October Built. Heard great things about it. Another movie I bought off of my friend and haven't had a chance to watch yet. Uh, next up, Dark City, another movie that debatably shouldn't be on this shelf, but I love it, so I put it there. And it does have sort of dark themes. Um, if you have not seen Dark City, I would highly recommend it. I think you could get the director's cut Blu-ray for dirt cheap. Definitely watch the director's cut. Don't watch the theatrical edition. Um, it basically was The Matrix before The Matrix. Um, the style of The Matrix is there. The themes of The Matrix are there. And even the story is similar to The Matrix. And it came out a year or two before The Matrix. Um, and unfortunately it just got buried. Everyone loved the matrix and nobody talked about dark city. So, um, definitely check that out if you get a chance though. Uh, M night Shyamalan's the visit found footage, horror movie, horror comedy, kind of, uh, it's a fun movie enough. Um, I got it for pretty cheap. Um, quiet place. Another one I'm not going to talk about just cause everyone knows about a quiet place. Next up is the first feast movie. Um, I had these on DVD and I'm going to go back and buy the DVDs of the three movies because, they were really fun movies, um, written by Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan, and I believe directed by John Gulliger. Um, the problem is that this says it's the unrated version of Feast. It is not the unrated version of Feast. The Blu-ray is a lie. Uh, it's the R-rated version. I've gone, I've checked it several times. It has, it's missing a lot of footage from the unrated version, so, uh, borderline false advertising. So I'm going to go back and buy it on DVD at some point, just so I can have the unrated cut. Uh, next up is The Lighthouse. Um, wonderful, wonderful film by Robert Eggers, who also directed The Witch. Uh, this came out two years ago, I think. Um, uh, really worth checking out, though. It's a beautifully made film. Uh, next up is Ari Aster's Hereditary, another one I'm probably going to upgrade to 4K at some point. Um, it's I love the fact that it stars Tony Collette. I think she's one of the great underrated actresses working today. Um, really good horror film, though. Much more sort of old-fashioned and art house, though. Uh, so if you're looking for a lot of jumps, don't watch it. Watch it if you want, like, a legitimately great film. Next up is The Last Circus, another film that debatably should not be on the horror shelf, but it has certain horrific elements to it. Um, bizarre movie about warring clowns, and it takes place um, in the past, and there's a lot of, like, historical events going on, and just really bizarre film. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, next up, Aero Video Collection of um, Hideo Nakata's Dark Water, which is... The director of the Ringyu, the first uh, Ringyu movie and the second one, and it's also based on a novel by the same author, Koji Suzuki. Um, really excellent film. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, this era video set is quite nice. Uh, next up is The Boy, the movie that came out a few years ago about the uh, possibly haunted doll. Um, a fun movie. It's not great, but I think it's enjoyable for sort of being trashy fun. Uh, I have the first Human Centipede. I have to buy the trilogy set. Um, of course, disgusting, disgusting film by Tom Six. Uh, Krampus, Michael Doherty from Trick or Treat. Uh, really fun film. I would highly recommend it. Just make sure you get the right version of Krampus because there's about 50, ver uh, 50 different Krampus movies that came out around the same time. Uh, Silence of the Lambs, of course, classic. Um, Don't Look Now. This is a really nice Criterion Collection edition with Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland. Um... Very, very artsy horror film. Uh, not a lot of jumps. Uh, very slowly paced and deliberate. But if you like that, definitely check it out. It's a really good film. Next we have Seven by David Fincher. Uh, you know, cop procedural movie. Um, we've all seen it. And inspired a lot of other movies, including Saw. Um, worth checking out, though, if you haven't seen it. Next up is Haxon, which is nice Criterion Collection edition. Um, it's sort of a documentary on witchcraft, um, but it was made in the era of silent films. Uh, got a lot of really great imagery on it. Uh, next up, another David Fincher film, The Game. Uh, another Criterion Collection edition, starring uh, Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. And um, Deborah Kara Unger, I believe her name is. Um, really, really good movie, though. Um, hello, Erica Magnet. Next up is another movie I haven't seen yet that I bought off of my friend, Shallow Grave, which I believe is a Danny Boyle film. Let me see. Yep, Danny Boyle. Um, I've heard excellent things, though. Next up is the theatrical cut of Midsummer. Uh, I was talking about that earlier. I have both versions of it. Uh, next up, Babadook. Really, really, really good, I believe, Australian horror movie um, by Jennifer Kent. Um... This is a really nice edition. There's actually a funny story about how um, 
The Babadook accidentally became a gay icon because Netflix accidentally miscategorized it as an LGBT movie. And there is an edition that has a pride flag slipcover. And I kind of wanted to buy it, but um, I just didn't end up buying it just because I didn't feel like I needed two copies of the movie. But I, I did want that at one point. Um, the Mangler, um, Toby Hooper film, completely insane movie about a killer laundry machine. Sounds awful. It kind of is awful, but it's awful in the right way where it's entertaining. Next up, Wes Craven film, People Under the Stairs. These are all shop factories. Um, really, really, really fun movie. Uh, highly recommend it. Just whacked out 90s movies. Has a lot of sort of social themes behind it. Um, really highly recommend it. Uh, Sixth Sense by M. Night Shyamalan. I'm not going to talk about that too much because everyone knows the sixth sense. So it's kind of borderline pointless. Um, next up is the legend of Boggy Creek, which is sort of this classic Bigfoot, uh, documentary, mockumentary kind of movie from, I believe the seventies. Um, you couldn't really get it on home video at all in the U S. Um, I think this is, yeah, this says it's the first official home release and it only just came out. Um, uh, if you like sort of just, Odd old movies. Definitely check that out. You can get it online. Next up is the Rogero Deodato classic uh, Cannibal Holocaust. I'm going to move that because it does have breasts on it. And I don't want to get flagged or anything. Um, it is a tough film to sit through, but I think it is worth watching if you are a horror fan just for its importance. Um, the problem is that the film does contain actual depictions of animal cruelty and that can make it rough. Certain releases have edited them out or offered like two versions, one with a, with it edited out. Um, but I think it is worth seeing. It is a, it is a legitimately interesting movie on its own, but it just be warned that there is animal cruelty in there. Uh, freaky, really fun movie from Christopher Landon who did happy death day one and two. Um, Really, really fun movie. It's more recent, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Uh, next up, Drag Me to Hell from Sam Raimi. Uh, it was sort of his return to horror comedy, um, like his Evil Dead movies, after he did the original Spider-Man trilogy. Really, really fun film. This is a nice Shot Factory Collector's Edition that has two versions of the film. Uh, next up, The Haunting, uh, the original 60s version by Robert Wise. A lot of people like to argue that horror has to be rated R. And this movie is proof that you do not need to be rated R to be a good horror film. This did it with a G rating, and it is one of the greatest uh, haunted house movies ever made. So, definitely worth checking out. I would say avoid the 90s remake like The Plague, though, because it is pretty awful. Uh, next up, Jack's Back, movie with uh, James Spader. I haven't seen this in forever, but I just recently picked it up. Sort of about a copycat that's sort of recreating the Jack the Ripper murders. Uh, Dog Soldiers, uh, another Shout Factory, really nice film from the director of The Descent. Um, I think this is actually, I know everyone loves The Descent, but in my opinion, that's actually his, Dog Soldiers is his only good movie. I am sorry, I do not like The Descent, but I would highly recommend Dog, so, Dog Soldiers. Another great uh, werewolf movie, probably my third favorite behind Ginger Snaps and The Howling. Okay, I take it back. Um, uh, just never mind. We'll, we'll not talk about The Descent because of my controversial opinions. Uh, next up, James Wan's uh, Dead Silence. Um, I think it was the next movie he did after he did the original Saw. Um, really good sort of creepy movie, though. Um, got some problems, but it's entertaining. Uh, Signs by M. Night Shyamalan. D more of a sci-fi than a horror movie, but I put it on the shelf just because... Uh, Carrie, the original classic. This is a Shout Factory Collector's Edition um, with Sissy Spacek. Um, absolute classic. I'm not going to go too much into that because everyone's seen Carrie. Uh, next up is the 80s remake of The Blob, another Shout Factory Collector's Edition. This is a really, really fun, really gory, really crazy movie. It's directed by Chuck Russell, I believe, who did Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and Jim Carrey's The Mask. Um, it's just full-on gore and craziness for 90 or so minutes. Um, it's a lot of fun though. Uh, next up session nine. This is a really, really underrated film, uh, starring David Caruso and, oh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Mullen. Um, uh, it was made super low budget in the early two thousands. It was shot on digital video, shot in a real mental asylum, a real abandoned mental asylum. And it's just, it's a masterclass and just really subtle creeps uh really good film next up is they live the john carpenter movie with rowdy roddy piper 
Um, just fun sort of s more sci-fi than horror, but a really fun movie. Next up, the classic original When a Stranger Calls. This is one of those Blu-rays that has a slip cover made to look like a VHS. Um, really, um, really good movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it, though, so I don't want to talk about it too much. Next up, Criterion Collection of Lars von Trier's Antichrist. Um... I'm not going to talk about that too much just because we're getting down to the wire and I've been talking for almost an hour, but, um, really excellent film. I'd highly recommend it. Um, then we have Return of the Living Dead part two, which I've already talked about. Um, the fog John Carpenter movie, uh, another shout factory collector's edition. Um, really sort of fun, crazy movie about, I believe they're ghost pirates. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I just recently picked that up again. Um, but a good movie. Uh, it comes at night. Um, I think this is an underrated classic. I think people did not understand it when it came out, and it got torn to shreds. People did not like it, and I think the problem is they went in expecting the wrong thing. I think they thought it was going to be like a monster movie or something, and it's really not. It's a dark rumination on sort of the power of paranoia and fear, and I think it's a really excellent film. Uh, Jacob's Ladder, a uh, classic movie. Uh, boo boo Tim Robbins. Um was in the inspiration, part of the inspiration for the Silent Hill movies, uh, Silent Hill games, rather. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And then we have, for the Blu-rays, this is the last of the Blu-rays, another John Carpenter film, Prince of Darkness. I haven't seen it yet. This is one I just picked up, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, and then we're down to the wire. We are at a shelf of Asian horror films. Uh, first up, we have multiple entries in the Tomi series. These are based on comics by Junji Ito. Um, really, really interesting series of movies. I haven't read the comics yet. I plan to, um, the series ranges from really bad to really good. Um, and there's no real rhyme or reason as to which ones are bad or which ones are good. Um, like I think the first one is legitimately awful, but then the second and the third movies are really good. So you kind of just got to watch them and figure out which ones you like. Uh, next up, One Missed Call trilogy. First one was directed by Takashi McKay, I believe. Yes, directed by Takashi McKay. Um, it's kind of a J-horror movie while also being sort of a satire of J-horror. Um, I haven't seen the second or the third one yet, but um, the first one's really, really fun. Next up, we have the Eye series by the Pang Brothers. Highly recommend the Eye and the Eye 2. The Eye was remade with Jessica Alba, I believe, in the 2000s. You can ignore the remake. Just watch the Japanese. Uh, not the... I don't even... I do not know where this is from. I do not believe it's Japanese, though. Um, it might be like a Hong Kong movie. Um, but the Eye is really good, and the Eye 2 is... I like it more than the first one, but it's not really straightforward horror. Uh, third one is pretty bad, and the Child's Eye isn't necessarily related. Um, Next up, um, we have uh, Scary True Stories, and this is sort of considered the birth of J-horror. It's based on a magazine, I believe, in Japan called Scary True Stories, and this guy basically got the rights to the magazine and made three directed video features where he basically made short films based on stories from the magazine. This is just the three um, the three different videos edited together into one. Um, really, really fun, though. Uh Dirt cheap DVD, too. You can pick it up for next to nothing, so I'd highly recommend it if you like uh, Asian horror. Uh, next up is Juan and Juan 2, um, which are actually the third and fourth movies in the Juan series in Japan, but they were the only ones released in the U.S. on DVD, I believe. Um, of course, the movie The Grudge was a remake of the first movie. Um, really, really fun and creepy movies. I wish the first two were released on DVD in the U.S., but they're just not. Um... Next up, Tale of Two Sisters. Really excellent movie, but I haven't seen it in a long time, so I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, next up, Pulse and Shudder. Um, I actually have not seen those yet. I kind of grabbed these just on a lark, so I have to watch them at some point. Uh, next, Carved, the Split-Faced the slit -faced Woman. Uh, it's, uh, it's okay. It's not the greatest thing on the planet, but it's it's mildly entertaining for sort of cheesy Asian horror film. Uh, nowhere near as creepy as a lot of them though. Um, next up is coma. Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre film. I remember renting this years ago. And when I saw it for dirt cheap online, I had to buy it. Um, horror movies, such as the bang drop of uh, kidney theft. That's all I can really say without giving away too much. Um, if you can see it for, if you can like rent it or something, it might be worth watching once. Uh, next up, another copy of dark water. We're just going to put that over there just cause I upgraded that to the uh, Blu-ray copy I have. 
Uh, and I have not seen these three movies. It's Infection, Reincarnation, and Premonition. I've heard very good things, though, so I'm going to check them out at some point. I Like I said, there's a lot of stuff on the shelf that I haven't gotten around to checking out yet. Um, but yeah, so far, that is pretty much my horror collection. And we've been talking for about 65 minutes, so I'm going to give it a stop. Um, but I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you maybe found some uh, new titles you can maybe look into checking out. So, all right, you have a nice day.